Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're back. And today I'm going to have a different kind of energy. It's going to be Katanji Brown Jackson energy. Yes. Like, I'm, like I am on the Supreme Court. So I want, I want both, both of us to sit up high and have that like Katanji. <laughs> I, I I am. I'm a, I'm a Supreme Court. If she can do it, I can do it. I don't yes. want to. I mean, it would be fun. It would be. It'd it be a little be. scary too. I think. You think so? Having that much power. That's a lot of power. That's the title alone. I, I want she it. She is the first African American female to sit. And she's fifty one. I got time. Mm -hmm. You do. I would make a change in this world. You are. Right now. I, every day. I do that being sweet. I know. Oh, love I try. it. <laughs> uh, before we get started, also, I want to let you know about Who's Wax, the membership. 10 packs for $100. Go to whoswax.com. I have them here with me, so I'm going to take them in a minute because if I take it right now, by the end of the episode, I don't know what I might tell you. But in a little bit, I'm going to take some. So go ahead and order yours now and use the code PIVOT. If you use Pivot, you can get some money off. Now, before we go on with the show, Apple Podcast Reviews. First of all, you guys are amazing. We love you. Oh, we love you so much. Y'all really like are showing out with these reviews. And now that I'm back, I want to like see them, right? Because I haven't given you guys episodes for a really long time. So being now consistent with you, I have a message from KD from Detroit. I didn't realize I'd be DMing her all the time. I didn't know it was her. I'm like, hey, girl. So she says, my Shiro. I feel like you responded with such style and grace. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I feel like we are legit friends. I started listening to your other podcast. We'll, make, we'll remain nameless because I used to listen to your co-host who will also remain nameless. I love it. I, the I respect. love it. So much respect. That's my people right there. Yes. Respect and grace. Um, on the other podcast, but I legit fell in love with your vibe. I feel like you're my sister. I am about to binge listen to this podcast. Keep giving us strength. And when you think you aren't making an impact, please know that there is a mom of five sons all the way in Detroit that you are literally impacting. Please keep on keeping on. Shout outs to you for being a mom of five boys. I have Ooh. one girl and I'm tired. I got one boy and it's only been 14 months. And I am like, listen, do you understand what fire station is? That means I can drop you off, leave you there, no questions asked. Slow she's, down. She's made it with five. God bless her. Shout I know outs. that that you're so, moms are superhuman. Literally, when she said Shiro, like you're a hero. You really are a superwoman. So shout out to you and thank you for leaving that review. If you have not yet, go to Apple Podcasts and just write, leave me a message there for me that the whole world can see. It's like a a public love note it about is. the podcast. It is. It's cute. I love I it. I love reading them. They're very <laughs> very fun and entertaining for sure. I know. So today our topic is going to be elevating past other people's trauma, but before we get into that, you know, the main topic, there is something I want to talk about that happened this week. Yes. So something apparently major. Are you being funny? I go ahead. Okay. So my, go don't ahead. tease me. I'm not. So I'm encouraging. A April 5th, I called Paola and she was at work. And I was just emotional. And I didn't know how emotional I was. I think I was just in my feelings. And I'm like, I'm in my feelings. But when I tried to tell her what it was, immediately I made the ugly cry. And I was like, <laughs> so I'm turning 35. It was 4-5. Mm -hmm. And I turned 35 on 5-5, five, five, Cinco de Mayo. So I'm literally a month away. From the greatest time of your life. From my birthday. And I've been planning. I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do that. But I just really don't know because I... When it comes to my birthday, I never plan much because it's Cinco de Mayo. There's a party everywhere. So I literally can just throw Go on anywhere. anywhere. And there's like tequila, right? And then I get free tequila because I show my ID and they're like, oh my God, it's your birthday. So I never really plan big things. And I just viewed my birthday this year very different. What I The idea of what I thought my birthday would be, it's not that any longer. And it happened so fast, right? I'm only, oh my goodness, five weeks out. It's only been five weeks since I've been back home here in Florida. Oh my and five weeks, I would say, I say only five weeks, but it feels like it's been three months. Yeah, It, it feels like I've been here forever. So I moved back February 28th mm -hmm. and now my birthday is right around the corner. I had plans previously of what I was going to do with my birthday. There was all of this that I now I have to give up and I didn't understand why I was crying and so emotional. But apparently, remember these feelings we keep talking about? It's such a piece of shit. Oh, I hate it. So these feelings are surfacing and it's apparently I am grieving the future or what could have been or the idea of. You're missing, you're grieving the loss of the idea of what you thought you were going to be. But this is the thing. I think this should be your, your greatest example of 
trying to stop controlling everything. Just let life happen. Plan ahead, maybe like a week. Trust me, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm like, are I'm you a telling planner. me to do this? Because you don't, you can't I'm do a planner, this. but instead of like, I, I don't want you to feel like, oh my God, my 35th, I'm not where I want to be. My life is not where I thought it was going to be. I don't, I'm not in the relationship that I was. I'm not in the country that I thought I was going to be in. The country I thought I would be in. But you're thriving. In the past five weeks, you have leveled the f up okay I'm, I'm working on my cursing too I see just that. for you I, I i noted it i noted it you're doing great um, <laughs> you've been you're doing so good and i wish you would be able to see it from this side so i feel it there's times that i can sit down and journal and really look and be like wow like this is really happening or i feel really blessed about it like those those days do come but then the like a four days. or five i just saw that those dark moments the dark days or some days that just are hard and i was like oh <gasps> Oh my goodness, this is not what I expected at 35, but I promise I'm going to look good. And I, I, whatever I do, even if, even if it's throw on an outfit and go downtown. Man, we're going out. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We might catch a flight. Who knows? Might get on a boat. Boats and hoes. Listen, Just summer saying. 22, you're going to be a, a hoe on a boat. I'm going to be a I can. You you will. Okay. And we're <laughs> going to and we're going to destigmatize the word hoe. Okay, I'm not going that far. We yeah, we are. <laughs> We have to. I don't know if I'm that open minded. Being a hoe is not. Why don't? Why can't we just choose another word? Why do we have to have hoe? Because volumes of boats. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take away the title. What? Why? What are you going to be? A housewife on a boat? No, I don't want to be a, a housewife. mama on a boat. A milf on a boat. You see how it does a bad it? bitch on a boat. That's ah! that's good. Okay, I'll take that one. You could be a bad bitch on a boat. Okay. Okay. I just don't want the word hoe. Okay. Not that. And it, if shout out to you if you embrace it. I'm and if saying. you weren't our live this week, you will know exactly <laughs> how we feel about hoes and boats. <laughs> you definitely would. And then another thing about this podcast since releasing the last two episodes is that this is a, a resurfacing of podcasting for me, just like it was with Shit on 30. Mm. So what I was trying to tell you was when I started Shit on 30 was a blog in 2017. And then I turned it really fast into a podcast because I would use like bold all caps, like, fuck, and, like, how I felt. And like, trying to make it, you know, so you will understand what I'm saying. And it was cool because I like writing. But I found that the broadcasting I could do it, so I had to figure out how to do the podcast. So I figured it out on my own. And that was just great. It moved and it grew really fast because I had all of these feelings. My father passing away, turning 30, not feeling like I was where I, where I was supposed to be. I had, was in a six-year relationship that really wasn't going anywhere. Um, I wasn't married, didn't want to get married, was divorced. All right. It was just... According to society, I was just a big fuck up. Like I didn't have the white picket fence, yeah. and I wanted more. And it's like you shouldn't want more as a woman and as a mom. Just sit your ass down, be a housewife, and I no. never want that. No, I don't want it. So when I started, shit, I'm thirty. So many women, like, so, and and men too. They're like, yo, I can relate to that. Yeah. So that's how the community of shit, I'm thirty, just grew, grew, and grew. So here I am changing the name because now I love being in my 30s. Although I cried about 35. No, 30s is where it's at. I feel so much better in my 30s. I can't even, I can't imagine what 40 is going to be like. If I feel like this at 30. I'm going to be lit as fuck at 40. 40? You're not going to be able to tell me nothing. It was shit. I'm 30 and I'm going to be like, fuck, I'm 40. (laughs) And I'm going to be bad. But like I was saying, going back to like starting Pivot, now I'm going through this experience again, like as I've been going through it and y'all, the emails and the DMs mm-hmm. that are coming through of people telling me literally that they can relate to everything that I'm saying. And I'm like, no way. Because for 31 days, I sat home, quiet, off social media, not really talking. I think only Paola and Dex got to talk to me. And I thought I was the only person that felt the way that I do. Paola went through it five years ago. And I'm like, okay, but she's over it now. You know, she's gotten past it. Five years five later. Five years later. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. When you don't have someone next to you currently feeling as dark as you do, you're like, there's no way anyone understands what I'm going through right now. Plus, it's your own situation. So you're like, no, no, no. You don't get it. Yeah. I this, My situation was different. But I put this out here. And even, um, shout out to my cousin. I won't say her name. But she messaged me. And she goes, I, this is everything. Something like this is everything I thought I, I, I needed. And I didn't know it would come from my cousin. So I love you, boo. And I. I didn't know you were going through this either. I didn't know you felt like this. So I'm I'm sorry that you're going through it, but we're all going to elevate and get so much better because of it. And we're going to do it in a fun way. 
Of course. And we're going to be on boats with hoes. And respectable are- other people. <laughs> <laughs> We will be on boats with respectable people. Yes, yes. Cultured. So let's talk about elevating um, through other people's trauma. But before that, I want to talk to you about BetterHelp. We are sponsored by BetterHelp. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with them in under 24 hours. Remember, it is not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. It is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. I've talked about it the past couple of episodes. BetterHelp. I'm using it. I've been using it. I talk about therapy all the time. Right now, I have two therapists, um, a hypnotherapist and a cognitive behavioral therapist. But I do use better help. If you do not have the means and need financial aid, let them know in the questionnaire. Say, hey, I need help. And you put in, I don't even think you have to put in your income or show anything. And it'll be as low as like 65 bucks a session. And you get 10% off by being a listener of Pivot. So you're going to go to betterhelp.com forward slash PWP. So betterhelp.com forward slash P as in Paul. Actually, P as in Pivot. W as in with and P as in purpose. So PWP, I was going to say something else, but better help has helped me not say what I was going to say. Um, anywho, get there right now, get the help that you need. And let's go into our topic, which is elevating past other people's traumas. Let's go. Have you had to deal with other people's tra- traumas before? Yes, I'm currently dealing with someone's traumas. Are you? Who? <laughs> this bitch said me. <laughs> And I got a lot of them. <laughs> um, so, as, I mean, there's different ways that you ele- elevate through people's traumas. With I'm elevating with you. I feel like I'm happy that I get to tell you. It's like I get to tell you what's going to happen in a weird yes. way. It feels like I get to tell you what's going to happen. Just like that day when you called me and you were upset about 35. It, you really threw me in for a loop because you're like, hi. And I was like, hey. And you're like, are you at work? And I'm like, yeah. I said, what's up? turning 35 and i'm like what what's going on what happened you threw me in for a loop but it's like i feel you yes turning 35 is a milestone yes you thought you were gonna be in a beautiful country with your baby with your fiance with your daughter having a great time just relaxing actually do you remember paula was actually helping us helping me with the wedding do you remember the date for the wedding Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be next week it is my wedding was actually supposed to be next week. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, it's a lot to take in, but yeah. It is. But at the same time, and like I tell you, and it's true. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many times someone tells you it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be yeah. fine. When you're feeling it, it doesn't feel like you're going to be fine. And I and I understand and I see that point too. But at the same time, I also try and do my best to not let you wallow too long. Yeah, because I can get in there sometimes. But then yeah. I get really upset with myself because I'm like, I, I wasn't productive or I didn't do anything. And yeah. that, that also upsets me. But I'm glad that you did say me and not anyone else because we're not just elevating past a relationship trauma, like a romantic relationship. You have friends that are going through things. You have mm-hmm. siblings that are going through things. You have parents that are going, coworkers, you know? So there's always people around us and they have traumas that we have to deal with that sometimes just aren't that fun and Mm -hmm. we have to learn how to elevate past them but also how to give just enough of ourselves without losing and that's and hurting yourself huge because sometimes and i've done it and i've thought about it sometimes like when i'm because i call you all the time or i'll call dex and i'm like i have to be conscious of how much i put on other people because right now it's heavy so when i feel like no let me just journal now and that's when i'll journal like really 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 long journals um and i'm like let me not always call someone else Because I'm putting a lot on you and the few friends because I don't I'm not talking to so many people. So it's like it's a lot on you guys. So I will say this. And I've told you before, when I went through it, I didn't tell anybody. I don't know how to jump off a building. I didn't tell anybody at all. And I wish I would have because I would have gotten out of the situation sooner. Yeah. Um, And now whenever I've had other friends that have gone through other situations that I've helped them through that were kind of sort of like mine. And I always make myself available to them because I didn't have anybody. I didn't tell anybody. But you anybody. also have to make make sure that you're taking care of you too and you're not. Oh, yeah. There's something. boundaries. Like, yeah. you know, I work. Yeah. So if I don't pick up the phone right away, I'm working. Um, and I tell you, hey, I'll do this at this time. Yeah. I Those are my boundaries. Those are my soft boundaries, mm-hmm. I call them. 
Um, and I always say if anybody, for example, if you were like to be calling and I'm like, hey, I can't talk right now and you got upset about it. I think now at this point in my life, I won't take it personal. I won't get in my head and be like, oh, my God, I'm being such a bad friend when mm. she's been so good. Now I'm like, no, this is what I t- this is what I said. If you can't respect that, I'm sorry. And then how people, you feel is how you feel. I can't do this is what I said. We'll get upset about that. Oh, yeah. I've experienced it. Really? Yeah. Actually, I have to. I ex- when I tell people I I'm busy. To. It's not me being funny. Like I'm busy. I can't. No, I need. We need a calendar. We need to see when can we fit. When can you fit in? We do things on dates and times. Yeah, like and a huge quote that I started to like. I used to laugh about it first, but like those that matter don't mind, and those that mind don't matter. I have friends that I have a very good friend that I haven't seen since before Christmas. She came for Ryland's birthday. It was like we didn't skip a beat. I love those I kind of love friendships. It. We're about to, we're gonna meet at the end of the month. It's April. We're meeting in April, and the last time I saw her was in February. And we're gonna meet in April to exchange Christmas gifts because I haven't given her hers, Aww. and she's gonna give me my birthday gift. And every time her and I get together, it's like we don't miss a beat. You know, we pick April? up right where we are. So you're probably meeting her soon. Yeah, I'm meeting her on the twenty third, twenty sixth. Does she listen? She's probably like, mm, wrong date. <laughs> Call Don't, her. Let her know the right date. Tear house is in my calendar. I promise. <laughs> no, that's true though. Having those having those boundaries with friends mm-hmm. are, are really important, especially like if you're in relationships. Um, I I remember having to have certain boundaries. Now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't have. But I remember having certain boundaries in the relationship. Like, hey, after a certain time, you know, I just want to answer. Or if it's I'm eating dinner, which I didn't get the same respect back. Um, not answering the phone, mm-hmm. really back. Uh, so, you know, just little things here and there that I would make sure that I would have. But for myself, too, I have found myself speaking to people sometimes that whenever they call, they make me anxious. Or I end up that conversation mm. drained and anxious and just kind of like. Those are like energy monsters. Yes. Or they just suck you dry. So I consider myself an empath. Mm-hmm. And whenever, and I purposefully don't talk to certain people because every time I talk to them, it's always such a big, huge, heavy problem. Yeah. And I can't absorb that. There's some people that just thrive in negativity. It's I, always negative. Negativity, chaos, Ooh, no instruction, chaos. no direction, no order. And I personally, I, I don't, I can't live like that. Um, But yeah, those are like energy monsters. And I, I love them. If they ever, if there was ever an emergency that they needed me, I am there. I have been there. But can I check on you once a week and see how you're doing? No, because every week it's like the problem, and then the next week it's a bigger problem, and then the next week it's a bigger problem, I, and I can't do it. That's too much. I was like, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't want that. And I've done it, and I keep answering the phone, and sometimes it's like, oh, it's just if I don't answer, then who will? They'll find somebody to answer it. Yeah. And then it's also identifying. You're probably right now like, oh yeah, I know somebody like that. But is that person you? You need to sit down and think, am I the person that's causing someone? Am I the drama? Am I, are you the drama? Because you have to understand that you need to actually sit and look in the mirror as well. There are plenty of times that I look at myself and I'm like, oh, maybe I, I could do this different or I should do this better. And also that's where therapy comes into play too. Oh, because yeah. Because your therapist will tell you about yourself. Mm-hmm. And not in a way, I don't know, if you've never done therapy, you're probably thinking that the therapist is going to like, be telling you about yourself they don't it, the way that they do it you don't even know they just told you about themselves yeah. about yourself i mean like they they're literally listening to everything you say everything and then when they talk to you they're basically repeating what you said so that you can hear it so that you can see for lack of a better term how crazy you sound right they say it or how um logical you sound too yeah because there are times that i will say some i would say something super logical to my therapist and i'm mm-hmm. like but i'm doing xyz and this is happening this is happening and she goes okay so you're doing this this is not what's the problem and i'm like huh what is the problem why am i doubting myself why am i doubting why am i thinking this is negative or it's a bad thing i'm like no that's a great thing why mm-hmm. why am i so negative so sometimes going to therapy will let you find out if you are maybe that person that's drowning your friends and then you have to accept sometimes when you're dealing with someone else, that you're not the problem. Yes. That, and you need therapy for that. Yes. Because it, it can get to a point where someone can talk to you in a certain way so many times, yeah. say something to you in a certain tone so many times. Anything that you hear day in and day out 
for a long time, you're going to start to believe even if it's not true. It's wild how yeah. you start believing it. It, it. it is really fucking crazy to me. Um, but it took therapy to understand for me recently that I wasn't the problem. And I do want to, and I'll probably say this every single episode for however long it takes me to heal. If it wasn't for therapy mm -hmm. and being consistently in therapy from when I was okay to now, I, I started in 2017, and going consistently, I would have been in a very, very dark space today. Oh, yeah. In a very, like in a depression mm -hmm. that I don't even know, I don't even know where I'd be if it wasn't for therapy and constant therapy for me not to believe some of the things that my mind was telling me to believe. Oh, trust me, I know. I don't, and when I think about you and you being in a very similar situation, and so many other women. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one, nor will I be the last one to no. go through this. So being going through something like this, it's like, man, this could have gone really, really wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I was even more, my, my intention was even more to just to tell you about me. Because mm -hmm. I never said, I never said anything ill about that person. To this, you, no. I never said anything. I think they're a great person. But I I always try to tell you. And like I said, out of that situation, you're probably the only one that knows the most about it because I haven't told people about it. It was a very, very bad time. But when I can see it happening in front of me and I'm like, oh, my God, it's happening. I said, OK, well, let me say something. And that's my way of making myself feel better, because for a long time, I felt really bad that I didn't say anything because I have friends and I didn't say anything. I have very good friends and they're like, you never looked like you needed anything. No. They, and they and I've had one of them literally like cry to me and tell me, I wish I wish I would have known. I should have listened more. I should have checked in on you more. I should have. So I'll and tell I you the truth. You wouldn't, you wouldn't yes. know. I was about to say, you there's know. no way of knowing. The only reason why I And there are a lot of things that I wasn't vocal about. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that I kept to myself and I didn't say anything. And I would, I would say just enough. And that just enough that I would tell you and two other people, it was only enough because that's what I would work through in therapy. So when the therapist would tell me, no, this is not you, or like help me like think of it differently, then I would tell you guys. And I'm like, I'm really going through this. Mm -hmm. And it was because I had already talked to her and she had already made me feel like, okay, I'm not crazy yeah. for thinking this. Because it, I had to, I would have to process that stuff. Um, and I but, would tell you, like if you felt like if you went through a certain situation, I'm like, oh, I did too. This is what I did. And I, that's that I was my way of were, to, honestly. I thought you had a PhD in in psychology or something. I said this Aww. bitch knows everything. She'd be like, "Why don't you try this instead?" And then I would try it, and it would work. And I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> she's smart. Like she's really good at this." But when I tell you, ninety percent of the situations mm -hmm. when I would call crying or I would be upset, she would be like, "Well, why don't you just try this?" And I would try, it. or she would tell me, "Well, maybe this is happening. Try that." Again, it would work. And I'm like, wow. Like, I'll, how does she know? How does she know? <laughs> but then she also knew that I'd be, I would be coming right back because she knew that it would only be temporary, that it would help. So it didn't really matter how much how much work I put into it. But I do think that it's very important to learn from the situation. So now you went through this dark time and now you're dealing with other people's traumas. And this is, again, like I've talked very openly about my relationship with my mother on this pod for years mm -hmm. you guys had an open letter if you i don't know what episode it is but if you go down my episodes there is an episode that says um mommy dearest and it's an open letter to my mother that i wrote man two three years ago um i've had you know to deal with my mother's trauma and how it has affected me as her daughter and i had to learn again through i, I sound like a fucking therapy whore you're but almost, I am. You're about to graduate therapy. Uh, I don't think you ever graduate. Mm. You just keep going to like master's, PhD, and then you, another PhD and another <laughs> PhD. You just keep, keep going. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> because and the, I just, I talk about it so much because even with my mother's situation, I had to learn, ooh, I had to learn to accept who she is and just set boundaries or choose to not to be, whatever I chose, it took me years, but I did it. I no longer. And how do you feel it's going now? 
Who do you think you are, Oprah? I mean, because I, I see it, I see it from this side looking in, and I want to know. I want, I genuinely want to know. Were you a listener of the show when I wrote that letter? Mm-hmm. You were. It's so fucking creepy. <laughs> no, it's no, because it's. I like you said, everything that you see on the internet is not your whole entire life. No, not at all. So I will say, and you know me, I always, I'm very close with my mom and my sisters mm-hmm. and everything. So I, and I always joke to you about that. So now that you have grown from that because i feel like you've grown from it and you said now i i set my boundaries and i and i if i want to see if i want to see her today or call her today or text her today i can if i if i'm not feeling it i won't do it so now that you've elevated how do you feel your relationship is and could be going into the future so i'm learning boundaries baby Mm -hmm. like my i'm getting so good with these and um i have after my grandma's stroke, mm-hmm. you know, communication opened up a lot more with my mother. And I have been, you know, communicating with her. I have brought Psalm to see her. He actually stayed with her, um, not overnight, like a couple hours with her. She, he, she's kept him a few times for me. Um, she came to his birthday party. So, yes, there is m- much more of communication there with my mother now after four years, I think. Mm-hmm. It feels good. You know, I never not wanted it. I, I yearn. Who doesn't yearn for, you know, a relationship with their mom? I just know that I need to understand that there's limitations, you know, and that I can no longer put myself where I was before. I mean, there's limitations now. Like me and my mom and my sisters are super close. Yeah. My little sister, I will give her credit. She is the queen of boundary lines. <laughs> my little sister says, you know what? I can't come see the kids this weekend because I'm tired. And I'm going to take a nap. And I haven't. I have to take a nap. And she won't even tell it. the kids. They'll be like, can we see you today? She's like, nope, I'm tired. She's like, maybe we can do it on May the 17th. And sh- that's how she, my sister is on her calendar. Is she the one with no kids? Mm-hmm. Okay. But she's very good about setting boundaries. And then I'm like, why can't I do that? So I didn't know what boundaries were. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, I don't mind. There's something that I don't mind being used. I just don't want to be misused, right? Abused. And, <laughs> abused. Yes. Used but not abused. I like that. Why wow, are you so smart? Okay. So I would let people abuse me. Mm-hmm. Take me for granted. Like it was just, she's going to say yes. She's going to show up. She's going to do it. And I would just, I don't. I just needed to. I needed to learn to not do that anymore because people take no. advantage of you. Yeah. And now where I am in life, I, I really do got shit to do. And there are times that I am just tired. Yeah. Like even my own daughter, she, I'll, I'll say what she did. I, I can talk about what I got. I did. Oh, I'm going to choke these teenagers and just, mm. so she's currently, she, she's living with her dad um, just about an hour from me. And she was supposed to be coming. There was a, a bad bunny was coming here to Orlando. Ooh. It was planned for over six months. They had a suite. My sister was very excited. My brother, like, they were all taking her. I wasn't going. I was still in Jersey when all this was planned. So I didn't even know I would be here. So she made all the plans with her dad, my sister, my brother. Supposedly, she made all the plans. The day gets here, or two days prior when she was supposed to come. The day she's supposed to come. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and she did not have the plans. She didn't remind her dad. She it, she just thinks that she wakes up and the sun sets on her ass and everybody's going to do whatever they're going to do. So who does she call right away? Mom. Mom. At 8.30 in the morning, I'm at church and she's like, Mom, um, can you come pick me up? And I said, what? When? She's like, today, dad can't bring me in. She just had a whole mess of stuff going on. And I could have technically picked her up, mm-hmm. but why am I going to reward you with $400 tickets to Bad Bunny and a suite and having such a good time, missing school for three days? Like, this is a, a whole thing, a shebang that was going to happen because you were not responsible to stay on top of what you were responsible for, making sure you had a ride, reminding your father, like, he works, your, mm-hmm. sister, your aunt works. Like, you should have been on top of it. So... I technically had the time to go, but it would have been an, it would have been an inconvenience to me mm-hmm. the time that I would have had to put Psalm in the car for an hour and a half. Well, almost three hours round trip. Mm-hmm. The fact that I was planning on going to on Sundays, I go to church and I go to downtown. What is it? The farmers market. The farmers market. I you relax. Back. Yes, it's a relaxing Sunday where I you know do groceries, make food for the baby. We just kind of I just kind of chill at home, and I said no, I'm not going, and I felt awful. 
I felt so bad, but that's how people used to abuse me because I had no boundaries. And even with her, it's not only boundaries for me, mm-hmm. but it's also responsibility for her. You got to take on your own issues at times. And that mm-hmm. is your consequences and your irresponsibilities are not now my, um, what's the word I'm looking inconvenience. for? My inconvenience or, or my Shout responsibility. Shout out to Ala. She talked about why should she feel uncomfortable because of other people. Oh my God, Ala Rojas. Y'all go check out. We just launched the yes. podcast for Ala Rojas. It's called Work Your Magic. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It is. She's a I client. loved her first episode. Yes. She said that because she didn't, because other people, why should she inconvenience herself because of other people? Why should she be uncomfortable because of other people? I'm calling her after this and mm-hmm. I'm going to tell her she needs to come to Orlando so we can record. I think, and it's true. And I told you, she's about to be an adult. When you're an adult, guess what you need to do? You need to plan. When you ask for PTO, because I'm a, I'm, so, I'm a manager at my office. When someone asks PTO for me, they ask it in the future. I It's just a courtesy a week before. Hey, remember, I'm going on PTO this day. Just a professional courtesy. Oh, I never you can't that. just not show up because who knows what if that person is on vacation or something. Like, oh I don't know, professional courtesy. But it'll teach her I that. I did that. No? Oh, I do. You're, you're a really good person. <laughs> I don't, but I don't, again i didn't have boundaries then I, I i don't think i i was probably a lot more selfish and i was a really bad employee and the biggest thing this is a lesson to her if she chooses to take it as a lesson when you when you make plans with people you need to confirm why Absolutely. because people have lives the, literally anything can happen anything. plans can change you need to you need to check in hey are we still doing this hey are, are you still able to take me hey are you still Dropping me off, picking me up. Yeah. Are we even still going? Right. <laughs> Are we still going? Can I miss school? Have I been projecting the behavior of someone that should be rewarded with something like this? Because, uh, again, right. I'm a mom. I'm, I'm still a mom. And here right. comes my mom thing. If you haven't been doing it in school, I got to give you three hots and a cot. That's all I got to give you. That's it. That's it. And actually, one might be, might be two hots and a cold. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like... There's anything could happen. It hopefully it was a lesson learned. Hopefully, hopefully. it was a lesson learned. But you know what? A hard head makes a soft ass. Uh, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna get it some way, somehow. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it figured out. Man, I hope she figures it out. These teenagers are like so Don't scare me. I have one coming up soon. Not soon. It's not soon. Girl, she's five. You have a I just had her the other day. I you, still cry from February 9th through February 11th. I need to stop <laughs> with this crying shit. You gotta stop. Kettle she is black? No. <laughs> Excuse me? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, I guess I have a couple. If anyone in Orlando does Botox or what's the other one? Dyspore or something. I need to get rid of these um lines and they've gotten worse ever since all this crying. So can I please get some Botox? Hit me up. You get Botox, I get lips. It's this girl and her lips. I don't know why she wants these lips done. You're fine. What if you end up looking like a blowfish? Mm-hmm. That'll be a cute one. <laughs> a cute blowfish. It'll be the cutest blowfish you've ever seen. Okay? <laughs> as long as okay. you know. Okay, well, I do want Botox and she wants lip injections, so let me know. We can, like, talk about it afterwards. Anywho, um, so basically to close this one out, I just want to let you guys know that you need, you know, to work on your emotional intelligence Read a couple of books if you don't want to do therapy. Read some books. Read some self-help books. Um, listen to podcasts. Listen to me on the podcast. I'm just kidding. Listen to podcasts. Um, they will help you. I promise mm-hmm. you they will help you and your emotional intelligence will just grow and you'll know that you don't have to stay in certain situations. You don't have to deal with certain people if you don't want to and if it's not healthy for you. You can, you can no. walk away and you'll be okay. Leave it at that. Not if, not if it's not healthy. If you don't want to. True. Period. If you don't want to. If you don't want to. Big period. Like a big one. If you don't want to because you're tired, you don't want to. Yeah. If you don't want to because you don't feel like it, because you just want to sit. You know what's that's really good? okay. You can love someone from afar. Oh, 1,000%. You can have so much love for somebody and mm-hmm. say, I cannot be next to you. I cannot be with you. And again, this goes for siblings this goes for parents this goes for baby daddies this goes mm-hmm. for husbands this goes for anybody yeah you can love them from afar you don't have to be with them you don't have to communicate to love them you can pray for them you can you know hope that they're going to be all right just don't do anything negative or, or or vindictive but they will be okay if you walk away but if you stay you won't be okay correct and i like to be okay 
because all this crying is expensive. Yeah. Okay. At 35 almost, these wrinkles come a little bit faster. So I need peace in my life. Don't you worry. You level up. You leveling up. And then we're going to have boats and house. Mm. Mm, I got gotcha. you. So <laughs> we're going to go over to our um, questions and our letters. Make sure to send your letters, letters to askcarlawillmarius at gmail.com. They are coming in. So shout out to y'all. Be detailed. Y'all are so, I just, I want to say again that my listeners are the best. They're the best. You guys are eloquent. You guys are poised. You guys have grace. You know how to, how to, what's it called? Express yourselves. I love you give it. give details. Yes, you do. So askcarlamaris at gmail.com. I'll probably read yours next. So this week it's anonymous. It says, hi, Carla. Not sure if my soon to be ex-wife listens to your podcast or not. We kind of used to listen to the same podcast before. Anyway, my ex and I were together for five years, married for six, and we're separated right now, pending our divorce. Our relationship I want to stay our relationship, I want to say was good and bad, but no relationship is perfect. But I was always faithful to her. But her, I can't say the same. She cheated three years ago and stopped when she got pregnant. And I had a feeling she was cheating, but I couldn't prove it. Hmm. A year later, I found out the child isn't my ah! Lord, so much. <laughs> keep going. Can keep you going. imagine if he's black and the baby was white? Okay, I gotta keep going. Um, you couldn't prove it. Oh, so the baby might look. The baby might have looked like him. The baby looked like him in order for him to like not. He couldn't. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, a year later, I find out the child isn't mine. So in my anger, I sent her back to her mama house. Ooh. A few weeks passed, and I was still in love with her. Again, in love with you my daughter. Can love someone from afar. Thanks for bringing that. We gotta tell him that in a second. Oh um, no, I lost it. Shit. <laughs> Shout out to her mama house. Um, okay, she was still in love with her. I was in love with my daughter. I tried to work on things, but in my heart, I didn't completely forgive. A year later, after reflecting on, on my own way, I realized that I loved her. She has changed. Wait, what the fuck? I was just talking about how good y'all was at typing. Uh, hold on. But in my heart, I did. Oh. So he tried to work on things because he still loved her. Mm -hmm. Then it says, in my heart, I didn't completely forgive her. A year later, after reflecting my own way, I realized that I loved her. But read this. Am I high? I don't know what's going on. Uh, a year later, I find out the child isn't mine. So in my anger, I sent her back to her mother's house. A few weeks passed, and I was still in love with her and in love with my daughter. I tried to work on things. But in my heart, I didn't completely forgive a year later. A year later, I didn't completely forgive, comma. A year, a year later, after reflecting on my own way, I realized that I loved her and she has changed. But can we be a family again? Question mark. Not period. <laughs> Little did I know she was fucking around with her male best friend behind my back. Then asked me for a divorce. Oh, this bitch. We have been separated for about a year now. And she's now saying that she doesn't want to rush the divorce. But I have now moved on and now I'm happy. I still love her. I and I but I still love her. Sorry this email was so long, but your advice, but I would really like your advice on this situation. P.S. If I have any errors in this email, I am sorry. Punctuations, bro. I got you. <laughs> I this, this is what I do. I work all day. I read. Okay, I don't. So you, um, you have me lost. There's so many things to unpack here. Can we start unpacking? We don't have much time, but we're gonna unpack with you, sir. So she's a hoe. No. Don't take her back. She ain't shit. And she only wants you back now because the little best friend she has left her ass. That's what's going on here. So you're her backup. Backup. And you're happy now. Don't look back. She's going to give you a, a more eloquent answer. But my ass is sit your ass at home, get you a new bitch, and don't go back to this hoe. And that's not your baby. Let it go. Don't Let it you, go. The, okay, the baby has no... It's not his baby. That, Why are you going to attach no, to it? The baby's only a year no old. There's no bearing on... But that's the thing. The baby... It's the baby not got a daddy. fault. The baby got a daddy. Does does she? Better find it. Better well, call Saul. Girl. I mean... <laughs> I always hate how when you're finally happy, the devil sneaks back in. Mm -hmm. The devil will sneak back in in mm -hmm. the shape of, a, of, a, of an ex, in the shape of a job. It, yes. In the shape of a hobby that you shouldn't be partaking in. <laughs> the... And it's always when you're happy, but I feel like that's when, like, that's when you, that's your test. Can you pass this test? 
if you yes. fail, you're only going to fail yourself. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. I will say this. I, my daughter's father, him and I will never, ever get back together mm-hmm. again. I know that he can be a different person. I will always have love for him because he's my daughter's father. I will, I will have love for him, but I have my boundaries yeah. when it comes to him and I. You can love someone, like you said, from afar. You can still be her friend. There's nothing wrong with being a friend eh. and setting your boundaries. Okay. With when, really, really big yeah. boundaries. Right? If you big feel, boundaries. Like big cojones. If you feel like she's someone who genuinely isn't happy for you or what's going on in your life, you know what? You need to separate from that. But she doesn't. I'm telling you, sir. She does not have your best interest at heart. She no. Just, she's, she's probably recognizing that she messed up. Nah. Mm-mm. She cheated while they were married, got pregnant by a whole nother man, made this nigga believe for a year that was his baby. I understand what you're hearing. And again, she's a pe- liar. She is a liar. So she's go a liar lie to somebody and a else. cheater. But And then cheated again with the best friend. She can't even be trusted unless you're gonna live in the middle of nowhere with her and she can't go nowhere. And you're gonna isolate her from the world. And then she's gonna get on Tinder and she's gonna use OnlyFans. No. The o- well. The only thing I will say here is use your best discretion. Mine. Don't go back. Use your best discretion. And if people can change. Yeah, for someone people, else. Change for somebody else. People can change. They can change for somebody and else. You don't you don't know the whole story. You don't know and by the story I mean like you don't know the story of how your life is supposed to look like. I hear you. And I mean that is true because people do say that people can change or whatever, but sometimes it gets to a point where you have done me so dirty mm-hmm. that change or not, God bless you. Go and walk with Jesus. I feel but don't you. come back around this way. I no, I trust me. I I hear you. But I I think I've also turned into a more I, grace. Grace is big. Yeah, you can, you give can them have the grace. grace to move on somewhere else. Grace, and again, you never know. You never know. What if what if they get together and they're like, you know what? Let's work on this with therapy and let's see what we can do. Listen. All right. When you bring therapy in. You no, can I'm just sit kidding. down with like therapy. Her. You can sit. That's true. What if you start? What if you genuinely are remorseful and you do change for the better? You never know. All right. So you want to sit here and be all and like emotional and like really actually your... tap into your emotional <laughs> intelligence. Good job. It's, <laughs> it's, it's your decision as a person. Like you, you're the only one that can say, you know what? Can I go through this again? Yeah. Can I deal with this again? And if the answer is no, you're not wrong. And if the answer is yes, who knows? I mean, what there, is, there I has been stranger things happen. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. I was watching this, this new show that we're, Girl, yeah, listen, we get, mm-mm. that's a different we're, episode. That's a whole different episode. We got to yes. do a whole episode on that shit. Yes. Because I'm never dating again in my life. Well, I hope we helped you. Yes. Um, let us know what you end up doing or how you do it. If we helped you at all, send me an email again. Um, make sure that if, again, if you want to send an email, send it to askcarlawamirez at gmail.com. Now we're going to move on to our last segment. And this is our Bible verse for the week. We're going to leave you with a tidbit of something that will. Just uplift you. Touch your little heart. <laughs> Touch your little heart. A little tickle, tickle. Just tickle, tickle. Yes. So this week we have 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The first thing I see here is humble. Mm. I think sometimes we, like... We're like, you know, chest out. Like, we we know what we're doing. We're so smart. We're just Very humble yourself. Prideful. From, yes. Pride is huge. And ego. Mm-hmm. Pride and ego will literally shut you off from anything positive. Isn't there like a saying, like, pride cometh before the fall? Wow. Right? And it'd be a big fall. It's usually a pretty big fall if you don't humble yourself. Um, under God's almighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And when I see in due time... Waiting. <gasps> Waiting. Waiting is so hard. You got to wait your turn. But I have been the most patient I've ever been in 34 years. And you haven't lifted a finger for the last how many days that you've been Five thriving? Weeks, you haven't lifted one finger. I haven't. It's been you, 39 days. You've been waking up what, at whatever time the sun rises. Well, whatever time Psalm rises. With the sun. <laughs> he rises with the sun. <laughs> he does. And you, stuff just comes to you in due time. Stuff is coming to you. Yeah. 
it's, it's and coming. You've, you've had to humble yourself. Big time. You've had to I've humble yourself. I've had to yourself. hold my tongue. Mm-hmm. I've had to I, humble and myself. And what has God time. done for you? Everything in due time. Literally, he has. He told me to cast all my anxieties onto him because he cares for me. And it's all happened. Mm-hmm. So I am here a walking testimony that in the last 39 days, I have done everything different every single day that I would have done on day 40 before. Look at God. Look at God. He's a, he's a mighty one. We got praise day. Oh we got to do a praise break. <laughs> <laughs> if I could sing, I could I would sing for y'all, but you don't want me to sing. <laughs> I'm going to hurt your ears. Not even, not even playing around when I do it. Anyways, that is today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for doing the episode with me, ma'am. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is an episode when we talk on the phone anyway. <laughs> um, before we get out of here, don't forget who's wax.com. Use the code pivot to get some money off. And you, how do they find you and your business? So I have of late been more open to my Instagram. She wide like open, that. y'all. She wide so open. I, my Instagram is just pales, J U S T P A L E S. That's long story behind that. <laughs> and then my business is the family planner. I am very busy. She's booked and busy. So if you really need me, please book an appointment because I am busy until further notice, possibly (laughs) June. Yeah. June, July, she's booked out. too. So if you need help decluttering, if you need help organizing in the central Florida area, or if you got the coins to fly her out, she loved getting flued out. (laughs) Um, Let let us know. So that's the family planner one dot com. Yes. The family planner. Oh, one dot com. Oh, one. Sorry. Um, and then just pales on Instagram. You guys know me, Carla Womaris or Pivot with Purpose Pod. And that's a wrap. See you next See you week. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>